Do I have 10? Plus 9? We got it. Negative 2. 5 times negative 2? Absolute value of negative 10? 10 plus 9, 19. Notice how the absolute value is only associated with this, that plus 9, that would not have worked if we would have set up the two equations without subtracting 9 first. That would have been a big problem. I'll just try one of these on your own, just to get the hang of it, hang of it get your head around it. So what do we do first? Do we subtract 8 first or do we make two equations first? Subtract 8. Sure. You have to have your absolute value isolated before you make those two equations. So when we subtract 8, absolute value of 3x equals 6, that's where we can make those two equations. We know that if the absolute value of 3x equals 6, then if 3x equals 6, absolute value of 6 is 6. If 3x equals negative 6, absolute value of negative 6 is 6. We just solve each of these individually, and then we have our two solutions. So we divide by 3. x equals 2. Divide by 3 over here. x equals negative 2, and we're done. How many people got that? Good for you. That's fantastic. What else can we do with this? Let's try this problem. Hey, what do you suppose I do first on this? Why subtract the 4? Or why add 4? <laughs> I'm just doing what you guys say. <laughs> why add the 4? Because you want to isolate. Yeah, hey, if it's not isolated, we cannot do anything with this. We cannot make up two equations right here. Listen, you cannot make two, two equations up right here. One of them is going to be wrong. One of them is going to be right, but one of them is going to be wrong. The one where you just drop the absolute value like this one, this one would be right all the time. If you just do the math on it, that's essentially what we're doing, right? We're just ignoring the absolute value for this side. This one's the one that's going to be wrong. So what we really have to make sure we're doing is isolating the absolute value. It's up here on the, on the board. Isolate the absolute value before you do any making two equations out of this thing. Yeah, you're right. Add the 4. Three times the absolute value of y gives us... Oh, that's 17 plus 4. <laughs> and now what? Good, yeah. Yeah, you're not, even, you're not even going to make up two equations yet from here. We're going to divide by 3 to get the absolute value completely by itself. So since this is 3 times absolute value y, let's take care of that. If we divide by 3, yes, those 3's are gone. I get the absolute value of y equals 7. If the absolute value of y equals 7, what do you know about y? It's 7. 
Well, yeah, it is seven. That's one of our, our solutions. It has two solutions. It does have two solutions. What's the other solution? This is actually how we opened up the, the introduction to this, this section, right? We had this type of idea. But look, you can still make two equations out of this, can't you? We can do y equals seven, and the inside equals the negative of that number, and that's exactly how we started our section here, doing exactly that. There's just no more math you have to do with it. This is kind of a nice problem. All the math was before you even made your two equations. Why don't you try that one? See what happens. By the way, is it okay to get fractions on your problems here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so don't be afraid of the fractions. You might get some of those. Oh, you guys are quick <coughs> students. First thing, what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So we're certainly not going to try to make it two equations, right? I mean, when you look at this thing, that's equal to a negative. Some people, if they don't know what they're, they're, they're really doing, they're going to go, oh, absolute value equal to a negative? That's no solution. Remember talking about that? Oh, that's no, solution. no, we have to get the absolute value by itself before we make that determination. So, of course, we're going to add 9. I hope you did that. We'll get 3 times the absolute value of y equals 2. What are you going to do now? Or what did you do now? Great. Get rid of that 3. We certainly don't want that thing hanging around our absolute value. What we want is absolute value equals a number. That's what we need to work with this problem. So absolute value of y equals 2 thirds. Is that okay? Yeah. Good. We just do the same thing we did before. Now that you have the absolute value isolated, absolute value equals a number, we say, oh, the inside can equal the number itself because I know an absolute value will keep positive number positive. That would be one solution. But also, I need the inside equal to the negative version of that number because absolute value will take a negative and make it positive. So y also equals negative 2 thirds. Actually, not even a whole lot of work with those fractions. You just have to make one positive, one negative. Raise your hand if you got that. Good for you. That's fantastic. I would like to change this problem a little bit. Okay, just a little bit here. What if I made that positive? What if I made that positive? How would a problem change? Explain that. So if I do this right here and I say that's negative 2, is that okay to have? Well, we could divide by 3, but you're going to get negative 2 thirds, right? Okay. What if I did this? Is this one okay? Yes. Yeah. What would you have to do now? Okay, so make sure that we're, we're isolating our absolute value before we make determinations whether there's no solution or not. Because if we do this, if I just look at them and go, oh, absolute value is equal to a negative, there's no solution there, we're going to make a mistake because your absolute value is not isolated. You've got to completely isolate that thing first. Are you seeing the point there? So if we divide by negative 3 here, Well, those are going to simplify to 1. We get absolute value of y 
equals what's negative two over negative three? Positive or negative? Positive. Definitely, yeah, we practiced that a few times, right? And then you'd go ahead and you'd actually get the same exact solution on that problem. Same exact thing. Big absolute value. There we go. Got a little crazy on my absolute value. That ever happened to you? Get a little crazy on your absolute value? I mean, all the time. You too many margaritas and absolute values are getting crazy, you know? And just kidding. What would the first thing we do on this problem be? What I was eating. Why aren't we multiplying by four? Why aren't we setting up two equations? Why aren't we doing any of that stuff? I want to take a look at it. Look at it. Is that doable? No. Can an absolute value ever equal a negative? No. So this is different. This is I kind of led you up to this this problem on these two, like doing this whole thing over here. But if ever you have an absolute value and it's already isolated, is this one already isolated? Yes. And it's equal to a negative number. Can an absolute value itself ever give you a negative? Yes. Ever. No, not if it's isolated. Over here, hey, that was equal to a negative, but this was different. It was not isolated. Do you see the difference between this problem and that problem? Here, there's nothing we can do to get rid of that negative. Here, we could divide by that negative 3. Negative is gone. We could work with that problem. Here, we can. So if you ever get an absolute value, it's already isolated, and it's equal to a negative number, what are you going to have? Yeah. And you put the empty set. It's that circle with the line through it. So we say this. There are no numbers which satisfy that equation. Would you raise your hand feel okay with these basic absolute value equations so far? Left hand side, you guys all right? All right. Now, the last question we have to ask is, what would happen if instead of having like an absolute value equal to a number, like we've had in every other case, what happens if we have an absolute value equal to an absolute value? So for instance, like that, what are we going to do there? Would they have to be equal to each other? Well, we'll talk about that. We've got s several cases, okay? We've got certain cases which we're going to take a look at. What does absolute value do? No matter what, it makes it positive. You with me on that? So let's, let's imagine a couple cases here. Let's imagine, can we pretend for a second? I don't know what these solutions are. We're, we're going to figure it out in just a minute. But can we pretend for a second that um, whatever we, X we, we get out of this, this is going to make this 10? Can we pretend that for a second? Let's see how many cases these things will be equal to each other with. How many cases make these, these, uh, these expressions equal to each other? If this was positive 10 and this was positive 10, would they be equal to each other? Because the absolute value of positive 10 equals the absolute value of positive 10. Does that make sense to you? So when I take the absolute value, they'd be equal. That, that's case one. How about this? What if this was negative 10 and this was negative 10? Would they be equal to each other there? You sure? 